Recording in progress. Okay, good morning everyone. Shem Aleichem, Baruch HaMa'aboim. Parshas Truma. Baruch HaMa'aboim to the Kol Agra de Pirka. Monday afternoon, National Shir. It's great to see everybody. Before we begin, some public service announcements. First of all, last chance to sign up for our Nasiya. We're leaving Matzai Shabbos to Italy in the footsteps of the Chida. We're going to be going to Venice, Padua, Mantova, Reggio, Bologna, um, Livorno, and uh, a number of other cities where the Chida visited. You could still join us. Um, Be'ez Hashem, this week, they're uh, putting out the book, The Concealed and the Revealed Pocket Edition, so that will be available very soon. Okay, so Chaydesh Adar, Parshas Truma. We have an amazing topic today, a life-altering topic. This will forever uh, revolutionize the way you look at tefillah. And we uh, noticed in the beginning of this week's parsha, Parshas Truma, we have the word truma three times. V'yikchu li truma. Li teruma. Then tikchu es truma si v'zois ha truma. Why do we have truma three times? And of course Rashi points out that there were three trumas. There was bekala gogoyles, machtas uh, shekel per person. And then there was the gold and the silver and the copper. So that was a second truma, and then were th those were th there were other items that were donated. So Rashi tells us that that's why the Torah says truma three times. However, we're going to explore today the amazing revelation of none other than the Abir Yaakov, Rabbi Yaakov Abi Chatzera, why the Torah says truma three times, another pshat, um, bes besides what Rashi tells us. Now, when we count the number of items that were donated, besides the, um, the machzas hashekel per person, we have zahav is one, kasef is two, nechayshes is copper is three, techeles, the blue world, four, argaman, the purple world is five, toila shani, the, the scarlet, six, v'sheish, the linen is seven, v'izim, the wool, is nine. So so far, we have zahav kesef nechoshes chelas argama tolah shani v'sheish v'izim. Excuse me, that's eight. Oirois elim me'adamim the hides of rams. Oirois techashim that's ten. Va'atzei shitim the shitim wood that's eleven. Shem and lamar is twelve. Besamim is thirteen. Avnei shayham va'avnei miluim a total of fifteen items that were donated. And yet if you look at Rashi, Rashi tells us that how many items were donated? Yud Gimel Dvarim Ho'amurim Be'inyan. Thirteen items that are said in the parsha. Kulam Hutzruchu Lemlechas HaMishkan. They're all needed for the work of the Mishkan or for the Big Day Kahuna. So it's very interesting that even though if you count the items that were donated, Zahav, Kesef, Nechayshes, Sechelas, Argaman, Soila Ashani, Sheish, Izim, Oyrois Elim, Oyrois Techashim, Atzei Shitim, Shemen, Avnei Shayham, Avnei Mulum, you have 15. Rashi says there were 13. But what's interesting is, the Mepharshim are troubled that what exactly are the 13? Really, there are 15 items. So the Sifsei uh, Chachamim brings from the Mizrahi that how do you get to the number of 13? He says, Techeles and Argaman and Toila Shani are all wool. Techeles, Argaman and Toila Shani, they're all wool. So therefore, since they're all wool, they just have different colors, uh, they're counted as one. That's how you get to the number 13. Because we're not counting Tchilas Argama and Tchilas Shani as separate, but we're counting them all as one. Then we have Avnei Sh another answer of the Gor Arye, that Avnei Shoyham and Avnei Miluim, the Nesim brought. So they were not, uh, we're only counting what the Yitzibor brought, we're not counting what the Nesim brought, and therefore that would be another way to get to the number 13. Which is, Sifsei Chachamim asks that 
Rashi is just counting the things that were needed by the Mishkan. And the Avnei Miluim and the Avnei Sham were needed by the Mishkan. What difference does it make that the Nasim brought it? So therefore, um, the Sifsei Chachamim offers a different answer, the answer of the Taz. That the Oiroiz Tchashim is not counted because it's not uh, something that was donated B'nedavas uh, Halev because it was only a temporary item that existed. And also the Atzei Shittim was donated by Yaakov Avinu. And a Nedav is only something that a person uses for their own and gives it up for the Mishkan. But these items were especially designated from the beginning for the Mishkan and therefore they're not considered donations. So we have three approaches in the Achroinim, how even though the Pasuk says there are 15 items, in fact there are only 13. We have the answer of the Mizrahi, that we don't count all the various forms of wool. Tchila, Sagom, Tchila, Ashani are counted as one. We have the answer of the Gor Aryeh, we don't count Avnei Shem and Avnei Miluim. And we have the answer of the Divrei David, that we don't count the Oiroiz Techoshim and the Atzei Shittim. But friends, today we're going to discover a brand new answer to this question of how you get to the number 13. And let us um, begin as follows. If you notice, throughout the tefillah, we encounter a recitation of Shema in davening four times. We say in Karbanos, Ashreinu Kishanu Mashkimu Marivim Bebatei Knesia, so Bebatei Midrasha, so Meyachtim Shimcha B'chayim Tamid. I think Nusach Ashkenaz leaves out the words Bate Knesia, so Bate Midrasha. Vaimim Pamayim Be Ahava Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekenu Hashem Echad. So that's one. That's one uh, option. That's one. Recitation of Shema. Second recitation of Shema. At the end of Oz Yashir, we say, Now, I'm going to take a little poll, okay? So I'm going to need everyone to come out of their comfort zone. Maybe, uh, you know, show me your face a little bit. Which anyway, it's a good idea to do. And um, I want to take a little poll over here. Let's see, how do we do this? Please raise your hand. If you say every morning, Pamayim Biahava, Shema Yisra Hashem Lekenu in Karbanais. I want to know, do you say that every day? Okay. You have a, a lot of you are saying it. Okay, that's good. That means you're actually in shul for that part of davening, which is a very good thing. But, you know, the most important thing, even more important than coming early, is to start Shema Nesay with the Tzibor. Because if you don't start Shema Nesri with the Tzibor, you're not davening with a minion. You could, you're standing in the shul, you're looking at a minion, you're seeing a minion, you maybe you want to daven with a minion, but you're not actually davening with a minion. You're not considered davening with a minion unless you start the Shema Nesri with the Tzibor. So many people, they come to the shul and they say all these nice things in the beginning of the Siddur, but you need to know the most important thing regarding davening is starting Shema Ne'esrei with the Tzibor. Next, next Shema, at the end of Oz Yasher, Va'alu Maishiyim Bahar Tziyoyin, Lishpoides Har Esav, Va'hoysal Hashem HaMlucha, Va'haya Hashem Lamalcha Kala Aretz, Ba'yoy Mahu, Yiyya Hashem Echad Shema Echad, Uvisayrascha Kasuv Leimoyer, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Aleikeinu, Hashem Echad. Okay, Raise your hand if you say that Shema. Oh, so now we have uh, much fewer people who are willing to admit that they say that Shema. I only see, let me see, I only see three people who are willing to admit that they say Shema. Well, don't worry, I don't say that one either. In many Sidurim it does not appear, in some it's in parentheses, in some it's not. But it's there. <laughs> it's there. Some say it, some don't. Here's another Shema. Raise your hand if you say that Shema. Okay, very good. 
I'm glad that there are a lot of Jewish people on the shir today, and they, they say Shema in the morning. That's a good thing. That's a, that's a good step. That Shema, everybody says. And here's another Shema. At the end of Aleinu, Raise your hand if you say that, Shema. Let's see. So we have uh, two here. Anybody else? We have two people that say Shema. Okay, I don't say that one either. But there are four Shemas in the Siddur. One by Karbanois. One by Psuke de Zimra. One by Berchaz Kriya Shema. And one at the end of Aleinu. What's the meaning of these four Shema's in davening? Now, let's examine another, another uh, important theme in the tefillah. This theme was brought to my attention by my dear brother, uh, Ari Gladstein, um, who brought to my attention a very beautiful chiddush in the format of tefillah. Let's begin with Yigdal. Yigdal, raise your hand if you say Yigdal. Okay, let's see. In the beginning of davening, Yigdal. We have a uh, three, four. Now, it's very nice you say Yigdal. And you should continue to say it, even though the Arizal did, uh, did not hold you should say it, nor did the Grah. But aside from that, if saying Yigdal means you're not going to say Tfilas Shman Eser with the Tzibor, then you're not allowed to say it. You could say it after davening. So, but Yigdal is in the Siddur. It's a very beautiful tefillah. What is the basis of it? The Anaf Yosef brings. It's predicated on the Yisoy Dehu Amuna that a person should establish in their heart. The Yud Gimel Ikrim that are Merumas in the 13 stanzas of Yigdal. The, th the first five um, are talk about Amuna Bashem, And the next eight are a Shevach, a praise in... Uh, Emuna of the religion. But the bottom line is, Yigdal is a Zemer, a Pizmain, that articulates the Yud Gimel Ikrem. And it's very interesting, the Shla Kader says that the Yud Gimel Ikrim emanate from the Yud Gimel Midois Harachamim. From each of the Yud Gimel Midois Harachamim emanate another Ikr. So that's a pretty... Uh, astounding concept and it would then mean that we begin davening with the Yud Gimel Ikrim not only to articulate the 13 principles of faith but we also are demonstrating the effects and the power of Yud Gimel Midas Harachamim because it comes out the Yud Gimel Midas Harachamim really are the source of the Yud Gimel Ikrim so that's the first instance where we see uh, a a uh, connection to the Yud Gimel Midois Harachamim. Then we come to the end of Karbanos. And the end of Karbanos we say, Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, Bishalish Esfei Midois Atarnid Rashi's Band. Rabbi Shmuel would say with the 13 Midois the Torah is expounded. Why do we say Rabbi Shmuel Oimer in Davening? Rabbi Shmuel Oimer is the beginning of Taras Kahanim, it's the beginning of the Sifra. We're not about to learn. I could understand saying Rabbi Shmuel Oimer in the beginning. You know, before you learn Gemara, you should say Rabbi Shmuel Oimer. Why would you say Rabbi Shmuel Oimer before you daven? You're not going to be utilizing the 13 hermeneutic principles of exegesis in your tefillah. That's reserved for learning Gemara. So Rabbi Yaakov Emden brings that the reason why we say Rabbi Shmuel is because a Jew has to learn every day Chumash, Mishnah, and Gemara. And by saying Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, this ensures that every day of your life you have some Gemara attached to your life. And this is the, the explanation for Rabbi Shmuel Oimer. For, and then he says, there's no machloikas in, Eze, in um, Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, like in Ezel Makoiman. So therefore we're masaking to say Rabbi Shmuel Oimer. However, says Rabbi Yaakov Emdin, that I'll pick Kabbalah, the Indian of saying Rabbi Shmuel Oimer of Yud Gimel Midah Shatarnid Rashas Vahem is because the Yud Gimel Midah Shatarnid Rashas Vahem correspond to Yud Gimel Midah Harachamim, the 13 principles of mercy. So, again, that's another example of 
where we find we're invoking Yud Gimel Midas Harachamim, beginning with Yigdal, going on to Rabbi Shmuel Aimer B'Shalish Esrei Midas Hatayra Nidrash Esbahem. Now let us um, move on. Raise your hand if you say Baruch Sha'amar every day. All right, very good, excellent, good, good going. Okay, so you say Baruch, you say uh, Baruch Sha'amar. And when you say Baruch Sha'amar, raise your hand if you take out all your tzitzis. No, trick question, you don't take out all your tzitzis. You only take out your front two tzitzis. So raise your hand if you take out your front two tzitzis. Okay, excellent. Raise your hand if you kiss your front two tzitzis. Yup. Who says you should kiss them? The Arizal does not say to kiss them. The Arizal says, when you get to Baruch Sha'amar, you stand up and grab the tzitzis in your right hand. And the Mishnah Bura cod codifies this in Simenon Aleph. And then after Baruch Sha'amar, you kiss the tzitzis. By the way, it's very interesting because the front two tzitzis, you have sort of eight strings and five knots. That's 13. Okay. But let's, let's even um, see something even more compelling. Says the Arizal in the Pre Chaim, Shar Hazmirois, Perak Dalad, from Baruch Sha'amar until Melech Mahula Batishbachais. There are 13 Baruchs. Baruch Sha'amar. Vayom. Baruch Hu. Baruch Hoi Mervi Yosef. Baruch Goizer Mekayim. Baruch Hoi Sebereshis. Baruch Merachim Al Oretz. Baruch Merachim Al Abriyos. Baruch Meshalim Zerot Arev. Baruch Chai Lo'ad. Baruch Poida. Baruch Shemoi. Baruch Ato Hashem. Baruch Ato Hashem Melech. 13 Midois. 13 Baruchs. Isn't that amazing? That there are 13 Baruchs in Baruch Sha'amar? Did you ever re realize that? Why are there 13 Baruchs in Baruch Sha'amar? Says the Arizal, Keneged the Yud Gimel Midois Harachamim. Isn't that amazing? Raise your hand if you think it's amazing. Alright, so one out of the 18 people think it's amazing. Okay. Come on, two thumbs up if you think it's amazing that there, there's 13 baruchs. All right, 13 baruchs in Baruch Sha'amar. It is amazing. Even if you don't put up your thumbs, I know, I know you would like to. Now, let's move on to the next part of davening. Psuke de Zimra. By the way, the Orch HaShulchan says that Baruch Sha'amar, you need to say, Benigun u Bene'ima, because it's a beautiful shir. It's a very sweet shir, and it says in the Kabbalistic work, Sefer Heichalais, that there are 87 words. The simon is, Roy Shai Kesem Paz. And 13 times it says, Baruch Keneged, the Yud Gimel Midas Harachamim, corresponding to the 13 parts of Psuke de Zimra. You ready? Haidu, one. Mizmar Lasaida, two. Yehi Chavoid, Three, Ashrei, four, the five Halalukas, nine, Baruch Hashem Le'elam Amen, ten, Vayivarach David, eleven, V'charis Yimra Abris, twelve, Shiraz Hayam, thirteen. And connected it, we have thirteen Baruchs and Baruch Sha'amar. So that's really remarkable. Thirteen parts of Sukkot Zimra. Haidu, Mizmar Saida, Yichavayid, Ashrei, Five Halalukas, Baruch Hashem, Vayivarach, Vichoros, Shiras Hayam. So here we're seeing that the whole backbone and format and architecture of the Tefillah is predicated on the number 13. Well, let's now go to Yishtabach. And Yishtabach, we know, that you're not supposed to interrupt in the praises of Yishtabach. Shir Ushvacha, Halel Vizimra, Oizumem Shalat, Netzach, Gidula Ugvura, Tihila Vizifares, Kedusha Omachus, Brachos Vahoida Ois. You're not supposed to be Mavsik. You don't have to say it Benishima Achas. It's not like the Aseris Bene Haman. You don't have to go, Shir Shahal Vizimra, Oizumem Shanazak, Gidula Ugvura, Tihila Vizimra, Kedusha Omachus. No, no, you don't have to do that. Don't mix even on Purim. 
you don't have to say it b'neshima achas. Okay? Don't get many people they confuse yishtabach with the megillah. Please don't do that. You just don't interrupt. But you don't have to say b'neshina achas. Now, how many praises are there in yishtabach? The mishnah brings don't interrupt in the fifteen praises. Shir shvacha halav zimra oizum amshala netzach gedula gvura tila b'sveres kedusha amachos brachos vaydois. B'chayyadim says thirteen. Until umalchus. Umalchus. Brachos vahayda ois is not part of it. By the way, the Zayar HaKadosh itself says that when a person gets to Yishtabach, God takes his crown, he puts it before him, and Knesset Yisrael begins to praise Hashem, and we have to crown Hashem with the 13 Midos HaRachamim from which we are, bl- breast, uh, we are blessed. And these are the 13 fragrances of Ner, Charka, and Kan Vikinamayin. What are they? The Zayar says, Shir Ushvacha, Halel Vizimra, Oiz Mamshala, Netza Gedula, Ugvura, Tila, Besveras, Kedusha, Umachus. And once we say Kedusha, which, which is number 12, we have to join up Umachus. Um, now, says the Zayar, it's very important to. not to interrupt in during these praises. That when we're crowning Hashem with these praises, we have to be focused on it and not speak at all. And if we speak, then from under the wings of the Kruvim, a fire emanates and it calls out, Ploini, so-and-so, that interrupted in the majesty of Hashem should be, uh, I don't even want to read, the severity of the punishment that emanates from this fire from under the wings of the Shekhinah. So it's not a time that you want to be talking. So let's say a guy comes into Shul and he asks you, could you please uh, tell me some of the secrets of the Maisa Merkava? No, you can't interrupt in the middle of Yishtabach. Let's say somebody comes in and he says, by the way, who won last night? So you don't, you don't say anything to him. Okay? I heard there was a good one last night. After davening, you say to him, what were you talking about? He said, last night it was a big game. You say, what? what? What big game? The Super Bowl. He said, I don't even know what the Super Bowl is. Why are you interrupting me in the middle of Yishtabach? No, but it, it, it was a terrific game. went down to... I don't know what you're talking about. He said, football. Maza football. Kadoregel. Saker. I, I don't know what you're talking about. So you can't, ent- you can't interrupt in the middle uh, of the davening, especially Yishtabach. So here, think about it. You have the 13 praises of Yigdal. You have the 13 praises Baruch Sabaruch Sha'amar. 13 sections of Sukkot Zimra. 13 praises in Yishtabach. Marvara Aboisai, what about Shemona Esrei? So you say, what do you mean? Shemona Esrei are 18 brachas and they added a 19th. But watch this. You have three blessings in the beginning. Avais, Gevurais, Kedusha, you have three blessings in the end, Ritzei, Moedim, and Simshalim, and then the 13 blessings in the middle. You have 13 brachas in the middle. So my brother Ari pointed out that we, there's a principle that we always have to praise Hashem and then ask for our needs. So we start off with 13 praises, 13 baruchs, 13 sections of Sukkot Zimra, 13 praises in Yishtabach, and then for each Praise, we're able to make a bakasha in the 13 middle brachas of Shemayna Esrei. But Marv Rabbi fasten your seatbelts, because we now come to an amazing teaching. There are four times in davening that we say Shema. There are also four permutations of Yud Kei Vav Kei. They are and this is brought in the introduction to the Abir Ya'akov. You have Hashem's Yud Kei Vav Kei spelled out B'miloy Yudin, spelled out with Yuds. Look over here at number 26, I believe, 22. Um, so you could spell it Yud Vav Dalet. Hey is Hey Yud. Vav is Vav Yud Vav. Hey is Hey Yud. 
That's a gematria of 72. That's God's name of Ayin Beis. Then you have Hashem's name of Samach Gimel, where it's, the letters are spelled in a com combination. Yud is Yud Vav Dalet, He is He Yud, but the Vav instead of Vav Yud is Vav Aleph. So now the 72 is knocked down by 9, and the He is a He Yud to 63. That's Sag, Samach Gimel. Then you have the Shem Havaya with Alephs, and that Shem Havaya has the lowest numerical value. Yud is Yud Vav Dalet, He is He Aleph. Vav is Vav Aleph Vav, He is He Aleph, 45. That's Ma. And then there's 52. Shem Ben Nun, Ben Nun, Ben, which is Havaya with He's. Yud is Yud Vav Dalet, He is He He, Vav is Vav Vav, He is He He, 52. These, by the way, if you add up 72, 63, 45, and 52, you get 232. This is the secret of V'yidgu l'arayv. V'yidgu l'arayv. If you add up the four per permutations of the Shem Havaya, you get 232. V'yidgu l'arayv. L'arayv is 232. Yaakov Avinu is Merames and his bracha, that the reboy of Klal Yisrael Bekarev Haaretz is to be Mevarer, the Nitzaytzais HaKadusha of the four Shemais, and of the 288 Nitzaytzais, which are um, Avais, but again, that's the significance of 232. So you say, why are there four permutations of the Shem Havaya? Ready, Rabbi Sai, fasten your seatbelts. The reason why there are four permutations of Shem Havaya is because there are four worlds. What are the four worlds called? Olam Ha'asiya, Olam Ha'yetzira, Olam Habriya, Olam Ha'atzilos. Olam Ha'asiya is the world of action. That's our world. We're in the world of action. Above us is Olam Ha'yetzira. That's where the angels are. Above that, Olam Habriya, the world where of the Hechalois. And then Atsilos is where the uh, the Kisei HaKavoid, where Shmisham Neetzal Kudshabricha. These are the four worlds. The remes to the four worlds are, we say, Abia Renanois Ba'ad Mephalai. We refer to it in the davening on the Yom Naram, we say, we say, Abi are the four worlds. Atsilos, Bria, Yitzira, Asiya. You know where else these four worlds are alluded to? Ashrei, Yoishrei, Vesecha, Oid. Rashi Tevois, Ashrei, Aleph, Atsilos, Yoishrei, Yitzira, Yud. Beisecha, Vez, Bria, Oid, Ayin. The Maram Shik says, I remember when I was a child, learning in the yeshiva by the holy Chassam Soifer. I heard from him that the Seder Hatfila is Mechuvan Kenege the Dalet Oilamois, Abia is Rashi Tevois, Ashrei, Yoyshe, Beisecha, Oid, Yahalalucha. And furthermore, Aleph is Hashem. Yoshev Eisecha, God gave to the 12 shvat, Shvatim. Ayin is the 70 souls. And it's also Marames to the various worlds. And they are Asiya is the Oilam HaTachtain, Yitzira is the Oilam HaMalachim, Bria is the Oilam HaEchalois, and Atsilos is Oilam HaAtsilos, Gavaya Mikol, Kol Gavaya Shoimer. And these four worlds correspond to the four permutations of Hashem's name. Ayin Beis, Samach Gimel, Mem He, Beis Nun. Ayin Beis is Oilam HaAtzila, Samach Gimel is Oilam HaEchalois, Mem He is Oilam HaMalachim, uh, Ben is Oilam HaTachtain. Ah, says the Holy Maram Shik, when we're davening, we're ascending the four worlds. And that's why there are four parts of davening. You ready for this? Brace yourselves. Karbanois is this world, Olam Ho'asiya. Psuke de Zimra is Olam Hayitzira, the world of the angels. 
Berchaz Kriyashma and Kriyashma, Olam Habriya, the world of the Hechalais. Shmoyne Esrei, Olam Hoat Silos. Rav Moshe Wolfson writes, we know at the end of Shmoyne Esrei, many have a, a minhag to say a pasuk that has their name in it or has, begins with the first letter of their name and ends with the last letter of their name. So I say, Dan Yadin Amaik Achad Shifte Yisrael, Yancha Hashem Biyam Tzara, Yisagev Hashem Eloike Yaakov. And why do we say these psukim? There's a Kabbalistic idea that a person is afraid that after 120, after the ordeal of the soul traveling all the way up there, one might forget their name. So therefore we say it in Shemona Esrei. So you say, what are we doing in Shemona Esrei? If you want to say it, so walk around the street saying your name, my name is, my name is, my name is, why Dafkin Shmona Esrei? But the idea is, when you say Shmona Esrei, you're going all the way into the Olam HaAtzilos. That's when you're literally standing before the Kisei HaKavod. So what better time to practice what your name is than when you're saying Shmona Esrei and you're literally under the Kisei HaKavod. So again, let's get this clear. The four parts of davening correspond to the four worlds. Karbanos is Olam Hoasia. That is the name of Hashem Ben 52. Psuke de Zimra is Olam Hayitzira. That's the Shem Hashem 45. Berchas Kriyashema is the Olam Habriya. That's the name of Hashem Samach Gimel. And Shmona Esrei is Olam Hatzilos. That is the name of Hashem of 72. Says the uh, Maram Shik. My Rebbe, the Chassam Soifer, explained to me, this is the logic of why we say Shema four times. Because in every world that we ascend to and we travel through, we want to unite, unify the name of Hashem. How so? In Karbanos we say, Ashreinu, Shanachnu, Mashkivim, Mashkimim, Umarivim, Batin, Sizbazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazazaz
the the uh, maram shik. Now, um, if the maram shik learned this when he was a little child from the chasam soifer, so at least once in our life, you know, we could hear these words, and it's kedai to be aware of it. Now, as I've recommended many times, if you get the siddur masoik midvash, it tells you. <laughs> where each of these four parts of davening begin and which shame of Hashem correspond to it. So either you could remember this shir for the rest of your life, which I hope you do, and I'm sure you will, and I'm sure every time you daven, you'll remember all the details of the shir. But if you have the siddur in front of you, it's sort of a quick reminder. Now, friends, this coming uh, week, we have the privilege, we're going to be going to Italy, uh, where the Chida lived a good chunk of his life, and wrote and published many of his farim. And actually next week is the Chida's yard site, on Yud Aleph Adar. But what's amazing is, on the day the Chida passed away, the Abir Yaakov was born. And the Abir Yaakov has a wondrous exposition on this week's parsha, taking the, the uh, principles that we've learned to the next level. He points out, as we started the share with, three times it says truma. V'yikchu li truma. Tikchu es truma si. V'zois ha truma asher tikchu me'itam. Why do we have these three trumas? What is the meaning of it? And the Abir Yaakov, in this week's parsha, he says that Tfila chazal called dvarim ha'oimdim berumai shal oilam. Tfila is something that stands at the sum, at the pinnacle of the world. Rumai, truma is a lashon of rumai shalaylam. It refers to tefillah, because tefillah stands for rumai shalaylam. The three trumais correspond to the three tefillahs of the day. Mariv, Shachris, Mincha. Now, the first time it says truma, it says li truma. Li truma with the letters is equal 698. The gematria of he arvis. The second time it says es truma si, gematria zu hi tfilas hashachar, 1457. The third time it says vizois hatruma, vizois hatruma im hakoilel is gematria zu tfila shel mincha bismana. So you say, come on, I've been conditioned to various types of gematrias over the years. But if you need to put in the word bismana to get to the gematria of mincha, you know, is that really a fair? Are you playing within the rules when, I mean, we have three trumas, okay, and truma is a lashon of rumai shalaylam, okay, and I could understand it corresponds to the three tefillahs of the day, but what, you're only going to get the gematria of shachris or mincha is zu tefillah shal mincha bismana? The Arizal tells us that the format of tefillah are the Yud Gimel Midois Harachamim. And as we're going to see, as we've seen from the Chassam Soifer, that there are four parts of davening and each part needs a Shema, we're also going to see that each part needs a Yud Gimel Midois Harachamim. And the first tefillah that we're going to deal with is Marev. Marev, Gematria, Vizois, S Truma Si, Truma Si is, I'm sorry, V'yikhu Li Teruma, V'yikhu Li Teruma, Li Truma is Gematria 698. And then we get to Shachras. Shachras is Trumasi. But what's interesting about Shachris is there are two critical parts of davening that we're supposed to be mechavein, that we would give up our life al Hashem. One is Shema. Many times we've explained that when you say Shema, part of Kabos al Shemaim is to be mechavein, that if ever put to the ultimate test, one would give up their life al Hashem. And the other part of the avening where one should think they would give up their life al Kiddush Hashem is during Tachnon. So the Abir Yaakov says that's why Shachris is referred to 
as Terumasi or Tre Maves. Tre Taf Reish Yud Mem Vav Taf. Two deaths because during Shachris one should be Mechavein at two intervals that they would give up their life al Kedash Hashem. Now we come to Tefillah Samincha. Now what's interesting is why is Mincha called Mincha? Shachris is called Shachris because it corresponds to the Tefillah the Tamid of the morning. So the Tefillah is called Shachris. Arvis is called Ar- Arvis because it said Erev in the evening. But why is Mincha called Mincha? Do you know what Mincha means? A meal offering. Well, you bring a meal offering in the morning also. So why would the afternoon prayer be called Mincha? And this is really the question of Toysvis in Psachim and Dav Kovzayin. And Toysvis gives two interesting answers. Toysvis says, well, Shacharis we have a good name for, so we don't have to use Mincha, but Mincha we don't have a good name for, so we have to call it meal offering. Or Toysvis says, the Gemara and Brachai says, be careful in Tefillah Samincha, because Eliyahu was only answered in Tefillah Samincha. And the Toysa says, well, maybe he was even answered when he was bringing the meal offering. And that's why it was called Mincha. But the Abir Yaakov gives another reason why it's called Mincha. He says the reason why it's called Mincha is because Mincha is really a time of the greatest Midas Hadin of the day. Mincha is at the time of Midas Hadin. The Tagboyres Hadin. The Kitrugim are Mesgaber Mincha time. And at a time that a person davens mincha, and is ma'ira rachamim, he brings menucha, and he subdues the midas hadin. That's why it's called mincha. Now, because mincha is the time of the greatest midas hadin, on Shabbos Kodesh, when there is no midas hadin, it's the time of the greatest rachamim. That's why Shalashudas is considered rava the ravin, the greatest time of rachamim. Now, there were three great tzaddikim that passed away Shabbos by Mincha. Yosef, Moshe, and David. That's why when we say Tzidkascha, we invoke three psukim of Tzidkascha to invoke the merit of the three tzaddikim who passed away Shabbos by Mincha. Yosef, Moshe, and David. However, says Abir Yaakov, only someone who is careful to daven Mincha bismana during the week can be ma'orer and arouse rachamim on Shabbos by the time of Mincha. Because the mercy that you elicit on Shabbos by Mincha is commensurate with your carefulness to daven Mincha bismana during the week. And if you daven Mincha bismana during the week, then the three tzaddikim, Moshe, David, Yosef and David, will advocate for you Shabbos by Mincha. That's why in the Gematria for Mincha, we say Mincha is Gematria, the Zois HaTruma. It's not Gematria Mincha, it's Gematria. Zut Fila Shal Mincha Bizmana. It's not just a trick to get, it, to get a, a more accurate Gematria, but inherent and integral to the formulation of Mincha, the power of Mincha, Sadam Mincha Bizmana. Davening Mincha Bismana, Mishnah Bura says you need to finish Mincha before the Shkia. How much of Mincha? The whole Mincha. At least the whole Shman Esrei. Now, says Abir Yaakov, the four parts of Davening correspond to the four worlds. Karbanois, Asiya, Psukhe de Zimra, Yitzira, Berchaz Kriyashima, Bria, Shman Esrei, Atsilos. Therefore, Chazal, in each one of the parts of davening, was Mesakein, third, the Yud Gimel Midas Harachamim, in the various parts of davening. The Brisa of Rabbi Shmuel, um, the Brisa of Rabbi Shmuel, that corresponds to Yud Gimel Midas Harachamim and Oilam Hasia. The 13 Baruchs in Baruch Sha'amar corresponds to Yud Gimel Midas Rachmim and Yitzira. The 13 Shvachim of Yishtabach, even though technically Yishtabach is part of Pesukah de Zimra, but it's an intro to Baruch Kriyashma is Keneged Olam Habriah. 
And the 13 middle brachas of Shemana Esrei is Olam Ha'atzilos. Therefore, says Abir Yaakov, that is why in the three trumas, in Parshas Truma, that correspond to the three great tefillahs of the day, Shachris, Mincha, and Arvis, we have 13 donations. And now we're going to see a new approach to what the 13 are. Not like the Mizrahi, not like the Gorarie, not like the Taz. Zohav, gold, Kesef, silver, Nechoshes, copper, Tcheles, blue wool, Argom, and purple wool, Telashani, scarlet, Sheish, linen, Izim, goats, Oyres, Elam, ramskin, Ma'adamim, Oyres, Choshim, Atzei, Shittim, wood, Avnei, Shoyim, Avnei, Miluim. What does he not count? Shemen Lamar and the Besamim. After all, the oil was not an ingredient used in building the Mishkan. The Besamim was not an ingredient used in building the Mishkan. The oil was to light the Menorah, not to make the Menorah. The Besamim was to make it fragrant. In fact, some of the Rishonim ask, why is Shemen Lamar here? The Dasakanim says that all the other items were needed for the Tzarche Habinyan. Um, and likewise, the Besamim was also not L'Tzarchei Habinyan. So, in the course of our learning, we've discovered a fourth way to how to reckon the 13 donations, even though there are 15. So, we've come to recognize that there are four. The davening is formulated in four sections. Karbanois, Psukei de Zimra, Brachas Krishma, Shwan Esrei. They correspond to the four worlds which are Asiya, Yitzira, Bria, Atsilos, which correspond to the four permutations of Hashem's name, which are, 70, which are 52 for Karbanois, 45 for Pesukit Zimra, 63 for Berchus Krishma, 72 for Shemana Esrei, corresponding to four times that we have Shema, Shema in Karbanois, Shema at the end of Az Yashir, Shema in Berchus Krishma, and Shema in Aleinu, and um, we have four Times we invoke Yagimo Mitz Harachamim, Rabbi Shmal Oimer, Baruch Sha'amar, Yeshtabach, and the 13 middle brachas of Shmaina Asrahi. Marv Rabbi thank you for uh, joining us, and um, I wish everyone bracha vahatzacha. Kol Tov, have a great day. How's this for a gematria? Yeah. The word Truma has the letters of Torah plus a man. Right? So uh-huh. maybe it's telling us that if you have the Torah with you morning, afternoon, and night, then you will be Zoha to the three Mems, which equal 120 on May of Ashram Wow, beautiful. Like that? <laughs> Great. It's original. Great. Fantastic. I got, the, uh, I got the email from that fellow. Okay. Okay, have a good day, everyone. Have a good day. Hatzlach Rabba. Kotov.